there are two great saints who were both devoted to a wound of Christ's passion. And yet this wound was not even recorded. Yet it was a wound that both Padre Pio and Bernard of Claveau had devotion to. Good evening friends, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our channel, Following Padre Pio. On this channel, through a series of short stories, we look at the life of our incredible saint, Padre Pio, who was a Capuchin friar, a mystic, a tremendous miracle worker. Do stay tuned to find out more about his life and also what his intercession could do for you. We also have a Mass celebrated every Friday in which we bring your intentions to this Mass dedicated to Padre Pio. If you want to have your intentions there, then just enroll them on the, see the video on the end screen. We encourage everyone to be part of this Padre Pio apostolate. You can do this by liking our video and sharing the video with your friends and with your colleagues. Now, as we said, there were these two great saints who were both devoted to the wounds of Christ's passion. And this was a wound that was not even recorded, not even in scripture, or by the early writers of the church of the time. And yet both the medieval mystic Saint Bernard of Claveau and the far more recent Saint Padre Pio were in agreement on this wound. But very importantly, both had this very sincere devotion to the shoulder wound of Christ. Let's have a look at who was Saint Bernard of Claveau. He was a French abbot and a mystic, and he helped to restore the Cistercian order in the 12th century. And Saint Bernard related the following in his writings called the Annals of Claveau, that he had had a conversation with our Lord. And he had prayed asking, O Lord Jesus, which was your greatest unrecorded suffering? And in reply, he received this answer from our Lord who said, I had on my shoulder, while I bore the cross on the way of sorrows, a grievous wound that was more painful than the others, and which is not recorded by men. Honor this wound, he said, with thy devotion, and I will grant thee whatever thou dost ask through, the virtu through its virtue and merit. And reg in regard to all those who shall venerate this wound, I will remit all of their venial sins, and I will no longer remember their mortal sins. The other saint, as we said, was Padre Pio. And as we know, he was a Capuchin friar, a priest, a mystic, and he died in 1968. As we know, he was an incredible confessor and a holy man who bore these wounds of Christ, known as the stigmata, on his hands and on his feet, for over 50 years. Now there's another account that confirms this by Stefano Campanello and he reported it in his book Il Papa El Ifrate by Saint Pio's Friary that the future Saint Pio had this very interesting conversation with Carol Vocilla, who of course became the future Pope John Paul II. And according to Stefano Campanella, Father Vocilla asked Padre Pio which of his wounds had caused him the most pain. And Father Vocilla was expecting that Padre Pio would say it was his chest wound. But instead, Padre Pio replied, it is my shoulder wound, which no one even knows about. And it has never been cured or treated. Then in 2008, in, this is 40 years after Padre Pio's death, the author Frank Reger wrote about Padre Pio the following. He said that at one time the Padre confided to this brother Modestino Fucci, who was then the doorkeeper of Padre Pio's monastery, that his greatest pain occurred when he had had to change his undershirt. And brother Modestino, just like Father Vocilla, thought that Padre Pio was referring to the pains from his chest wound. And then later on, in February 1971, when 
Brother Modestino had been assigned the task of taking the inventory of all of Padre Pio's items, the deceased Padre Pio's items, in the monastery. He came across Padre Pio's undershirt and he said there was a circle of bloodstains in the area of the right shoulder. Well, that very evening, Brother Modestino now had to, in his prayers, ask Padre Pio, please to enlighten him. What was the meaning of the bloodstains on the undershirt? And he asked Padre Pio to give him a sign. Did he truly bear Christ's shoulder wound? And after this, later on, Brother Modestino fell asleep, but he was awakened at 1 a.m. with this excruciating, a terrible shooting pain in his shoulder. He said it was as if a knife had been sliced right into his shoulder, through to the bone. And he said he thought he was going to die from this pain of this, from the wound. And fortunately, it only lasted a little time. But following this, the room was now filled with an aroma of heavenly perfume of flowers, the sure sign of Padre Pio's spiritual presence. And simultaneously he heard a voice saying, this is what I had to suffer. Getting back to St. Bernard of Claveau, after he had received this message from Christ regarding this pain he experienced in the shoulder, he sought now to foster some sort of a devotion to the shoulder wound of Christ. And so he formed this particular prayer going to have a look at right now. And this is called his prayer to the shoulder wound of Christ. Most loving Jesus, meek Lamb of God, I, a miserable sinner, salute and worship the most sacred wound of thy shoulder, on which thou didst bear thy heavy cross, which so tore thy flesh and laid bare thy bones as to inflict on these an anguish greater than any other wound of thy most blessed body. And he continues, I adore thee, O Jesus, most sorrowful. I praise and glorify thee. I give thee thanks for this most sacred and painful wound, besieging thee by that exceeding pain and by the crushing burden of thy heavy cross to be merciful to me, a sinner, and to forgive me all of my mortal and my venial sins, and to lead me on towards heaven along the way of thy cross. And this particular story has the imprimatur of the Bishop of Springfield, and that is Thomas Bevan, Bishop Thomas Bevan. And now in a video coming soon, well, we all know that there's been this rather uncanny series of pandemics. Is it fear mongering or is it truth? But the question for us, of course, is can God, is he able to draw good out of evil? So let's have a look at how Padre Pio fought the pandemic in his day.